Hey everyone, Chris here with one more filler video to close out 2013. So I'm sure a bunch of you are aware of that 2000 shareware games collection I took a look at way back in my 50th episode. Well, a bunch of you sent me messages following that video asking about one of the games that showed up in the directory listing, specifically that one right there. Well, since a lot of you were curious about it, and because it's the Christmas season, I figured we could take a quick look. So today we're taking a look at Words of Jesus. Now, I'm not making this a regular ADG episode simply because there's very little to say about this game. It was made by Aaron Urbina under the business name Testament Software in 1992 and can best be described as a memory matching game. The idea is that before each level begins, you're given a Bible passage and must reassemble the passage by collecting fragments of it from various biblical figures holding them up. There's no enemies, and your only real goal is to accomplish this task before time runs out. This shareware version of the game has five passages, while registered versions have 40, with each passage given its own background graphics and background music. To be perfectly honest, having played a number of Christian games over the years, mostly out of sake of curiosity since I myself am not a Christian, this one's not actually all that bad. Mind you, it's not all that great either, mostly for a couple of stupid reasons we'll get into in a moment. But the thing is, the game's playable, the graphics are alright, the music seems to have been lifted from other sources judging by the file dates but certainly fits the theme of the game, though I'm not quite sure why the Star Spangled Banner is in here. Granted, the song does invoke God and Heaven, so who am I to argue? The point is, I've played far worse games than this. But I do have a couple of reservations about this thing. Firstly, it's entirely mouse-driven. The keyboard is only used for accessing the help system, quitting the game, and adjusting your movement speed. Suffice to say, this is a tricky game to get the hang of controlling, and keyboard controls would definitely have been preferred. But the mouse controls are responsive at least, so while they're awkward, they work, and that's more than I can say for some of the mainstream games I've covered before. The other problem with the game is a lot more insidious and something that really should have been addressed prior to release. The time limits are way too short. Unless you have these Bible passages mastered, there is absolutely no way you're going to make the time limits, and even if you do know the passages, you're often going to be wasting time just trying to figure out where everything is since you can't see the whole level at once. Each level is actually split into three floors, which you access by using teleporters which slide along the ground. If you're faced with a teleporter you don't want to use, you have to jump over it by moving the mouse cursor into a relative diagonal position. Even after you've completed the passage, you still need to find a key, then use the key to leave through a randomly placed door. Fortunately, if you do run out of time, you simply lose one of your trials as well as the ability to make a fastest time for the level. However, with five passages to complete and only three trials, getting to the end pretty much means mastering the game, and there's not really much of a reason to play it again afterwards. I guess in that regards it doesn't overstay its welcome, but it makes it a pretty short game too. But again, this is just the shareware version and only demos the content as opposed to giving you all of it. Also, for those of you looking at these Bible passages and thinking they're not quite right, well, I did do some research and noticed that these passages are not 100% perfect or have been condensed down, but then the Bible isn't exactly something that's copied word for word with every iteration, so it makes sense some of these would be slightly different. Though, the fourth passage you're given, as far as I can tell, comes from Romans 9.33, not Romans 10.33, so I have no idea how a mistake like that could have been made, unless it was just a typo and that wasn't double checked or there used to be another part to Romans that was removed at some point, I don't know. Another thing to mention is that you can adjust the speed you move at using the spacebar between settings of snappy, quick, fast, and blazing. And yeah, you move ridiculously fast at blazing speed. The higher speeds don't affect the rate the timer goes down at, so if you feel you can move better at those faster speeds, then go for it. Finally, this is just something minor that I've noticed, but when you select the right word, sometimes the character you take the word from ascends upwards, or sometimes they descend downwards. I have no idea at all if this plays into whether these characters ascended to heaven or descended to hell, or if it's simply just some random thing. It's just something I noticed while I was playing through. Otherwise, there's really nothing more to say about the game. Apart from being a tad frustrating due to its unforgivingly short time limits, there's not really anything to complain about. It's just a simple little thing that feels like it was intended for young children, and as the author makes note of, is designed to be as non-violent as possible. As a game, it's just short and average and certainly not some sacrilegious thing like I suspect some of you thought it might have been. 
It's also really hard to find copies of this game online, and I had trouble even finding a legitimate place to download the shareware version from. But I'm sure you guys can find it if you really want to. Setting it up in DOSBox though is tricky. You need to set a fixed cycles count of about 2000, but to get the music working, you also need to load in a special program included with early Sound Blaster cards called sbfmdrv.com, which is surprisingly difficult to find copies of even when going straight to the Creative Labs website and downloading their legacy drivers, which is odd because their legacy drivers are supposed to include this file. And I eventually did find a copy from somewhere that probably shouldn't have had one, but the point is, the Creative Labs drivers are free to download and should have had this file present, so I wasn't exactly remiss about grabbing it from somewhere else. Anywho, that's all for today's filler, and starting on January 4th, 2014, the regular Ancient DOS Games episodes will resume. As for episode 126, I'm going to finally be taking a look at a flight simulator. One that's focused around military combat, using highly advanced aircraft, 7 and all, some of which were still in development when the game was made. If you think you know which game that could be, then send your guests to adg at pixelships.com and stay tuned as we continue our trek through DOS gaming history.